So it almost became like a meme to some degree that, you know, all of a sudden that Tom Brady has joined the Buccaneers. O.J. Howard is all of a sudden this perfect player who has never done any wrong. You know, obviously uh, he's shown a lot of potential and he has some very good qualities, but he definitely had a bad season in 2019. That's not unfair to say by any means. That's not to say that he was abysmal. He still had some flashes of greatness as well, and there still are things he does very well. But he was definitely a mixed bag in his first season under a Bruce Arians offense. Uh, and so I figured I'll just break down uh, what happened, what went wrong, and then what went right. And we'll start off with what went wrong. Uh, first off, it's a play like this, where it's going to be a cover four zone, and that's the route concept. And uh, important to note, this is a third down and uh, it might have been a third down and goal. It was a third down and very long. I think it was a third down and 17, actually. So not quite third down and goal, but pretty close. So Tampa Bay, they're saying, listen, it's going to be very difficult to try and score a touchdown on this play. Let's not take that risk, especially when Jameis Winston is our quarterback. Let's just pick up some yards. You know, we have two receivers run deep. OJ Howard runs underneath, get the, runs a quick curl. Uh, he's able to make the grab, you know, fall down. Uh, you can kick a short field goal. Just helps out in the field goal, and why not? It's a pretty low-risk play. And after the ball is snapped, it's working out. You know, Howard is easily able to make the grab, and at this point, you know, not much you can do. Uh, you always do love it when a guy is able to, you know, lower the shoulder and run through. But the problem with what O.J. Howard is doing here is that he has the ball just in one hand, and he's taking on several 49ers, and despite that, he's still just going to run straight forward, which results in the ball getting popped out and, you know, gets a turnover. And it's just not a smart play from Howard. I mean, typically, honestly, in that situation, you're not going to be able to run through six guys, just fall down. It's a third down anyways, not a big deal. If you really want to try and run somebody over, you can, but you have to make sure you have two hands on the football when there's that many defenders around because guys are going to try and punch it out, and you have to be prepared for that, and he just wasn't there. You know, one of the big things about O.J. Howard is he's a 6'6", 250-pound guy who can run a, uh, I believe it was a four five one forty 40-yard dash, which is just you know, crazy. I mean, he's an athletic freak. Uh, he's just a freak of a human. He's like Frankenstein. Like he was designed in a lab to play football just in terms of like his body. It, uh, you know, I don't know a not weird way to say this, but his body is perfect in terms of, you know, of a football player. Uh, just, he has, this, he's just one of those guys who it's like, he was built different than the rest of us, but that can only get you so far. And like, take a look at this play, for example. Uh, you know, he's going to be running uh, further up to the top of the screen, uh, there is a, it's a man coverage, so it's a one-on-one -on -one matchup. This is a good situation for Howard, and as you see, once the ball is snapped, you notice that Howard, because of his speed, he's able to get a little bit of separation, not a ton, but again, keep in mind the height thing. You know, he's 6'6", so for Jameis Winston, he just has to throw it up there, and there's a very good chance that Howard could potentially make this play. Howard's able to get in position to make this play, but he isn't able to make the grab, and that's kind of probably his biggest weakness is his hands. He just doesn't have the best hands. And, uh, you know, it's a really important thing when it comes to a tight end, especially, you know, a receiving tight end. Most of these I am going to be talking about simply receiving. He's a good blocker, uh, but, it, you know, we mostly talk I, – I, mostly where his faults have came in were through the receiving game. And in that play, you know, it took away a potential touchdown. But on this play, it does even worse than that where, you know, it's cover three zone. He's going to try to get into a gap in coverage. This is something you'll see tight ends do fairly frequently. You know, this is like a Travis Kelsey special. He's great at doing plays like this. And as you see, you know, Howard runs the route, and he's able to get relatively open. There's not a huge window, but that's never stopped Jameis Winston before. He is going to throw it in that direction. Uh, and, you know, he's going to make a pretty good throw, but Howard just, you know, drops it, and it results in an interception. Just hit off his hands. He totally could have caught that. You know, if it hits both your hands, you have to make that catch, uh, and you especially can't bat it up in the air like that when you're trying to get into a gap in coverage uh, that close to the line of scrimmage. It's just not a good idea, and it's going to result in uh, plenty of turnovers if you do that. And so, you know, definitely without a doubt, a few of the turnovers that Tampa Bay had were O.J. Howard's fault. He had a few that were, you know, not bad throws from Winston that resulted in interceptions. There weren't 30 of them, but, you know, that did happen. That did play in. But okay, enough negatives about Howard. I mean, he still did have... 459 receiving yards and considering you know his playing time was you know a little bit iffy he only ended up running 
uh, just over 400 routes last year. So it's not like he was a complete mess. I mean, he was to some degree, I would probably say, you know, around a mediocre starting level tight end. Uh, but the problem is that, you know, they expected him to be much better than that. He was supposed to be an elite tight end and just ha didn't really work out that way. But one of the things I would like to see Howard do more next year is use his physicality to his advantage. Like this plays a good example. Uh, it's going to be a cover three zone and that's his route. So he starts off running very shallow, sort of a check down. But if the play lasts long enough, then he can run deep down the field. That's kind of the way it's uh, supposed to work and it's play action. So there's actually a pretty good chance that Howard will be able to get, uh, get some yards down the field. And with the cover three zone, there's another receiver running deep on the top of the screen. So that can kind of clear the safety out and could get some separation for Howard. And after the ball is snapped, you notice that Howard looks over and okay, so you know, if you look further down the field, not where I have boxed in, uh, there's plenty of space deep. But right over there, there's a New York player who's, you know, uh, playing back, he's playing in coverage, uh, and he could easily realize what's going on and stay back with Howard. In fact, he's already backpedaling back to some degree, so what's Howard going to do? Well, he's going to make sure that he runs into the New York Giants player, which is not a penalty, uh, and it's able to be a, a big completion. And the reason why it's not a penalty is because since that New York player was moving back, uh, they kind of ran into each other, and you can call it incidental contact, or you can say, you know, O.J. Howard was just running his route. He has a right to be there, just like the New York Giants defender did. Uh, and again, you know, if he just stayed in one, it's almost like a moving pick to some degree. Not exactly, but there's some similarities there. But, you know, I mean, that's a uh, little bump right there. His size, he's going to win those matchups when it comes down to physicality. He's a big guy, not just for a, a tight end. I mean, he's he's built like a truck, uh, and he can also run incredibly quickly. So use your size to your advantage, and your speed will then do the rest of the job. Like, this is another example. He's going up one-on-one -on -one against a Texans player. That's the route he's running. It's a cover one play. It's man coverage. So... Uh, that's what's going to happen. But what I like about this is, again, watch how Howard does this. Well, first things first, uh, he's going to get his left arm and just, you know, create the contact right there at the line. You know, you have a yard uh, at the line of scrimmage. So if you're in a one-on-one -on -one matchup, use that to your advantage if you're O.J. Howard. Use your size to your advantage. Use your physicality to your advantage. I mean, you see his teammate, Mike Evans, do this so frequently where he uses his size to his advantage. Well, Howard's even bigger. So, I mean, I know he's a tight end, so obviously, but... Still, because of this, when Howard cuts to the inside, he's easily going to get open. He creates some more contact right before he cuts, but again, not enough for a penalty. And he gets easily open, and they're able to get the completion. And that's what you have to do. I mean, you know, hey, use all the tools in your tool belt. And if you have that kind of size, uh, use it. And then, of course, you know, it's not just the size, it's the speed. And he, he he's incredibly quick. Uh, and it really can uh, come into play, especially on these, you know, uh, concepts that are, you know, not just, hey, you try and get open, but more so uh, a team uh, doing a whole thing to try to get open. And what I mean by that is something like this. It's a cover three zone and the, the receiver on the bottom of the screen is going to run deep, but then cut towards the middle of the field. And him in doing this is going to get the Indianapolis player who's in charge of covering the zone on the bottom left corner of the screen to also move over the middle of the field. Once that happens, Howard can simply just run down and run to the zone where he was supposed to be covering, which he will no longer be because, uh, you know, he moved closer to the middle of the field and Howard can get open. This is a great way to beat cover three zone. And since Indianapolis runs a good amount of cover three zone, uh, it's, it makes sense why they're uh, calling this play here. Of course, the way for Indianapolis to beat it in cover three is just somebody has to notice it and get over and make sure to cover Howard. But it's very difficult to do that because look at how, how quickly Howard uh, is able to do this. Where right when the ball is snapped, he first off, he runs over. And really, that's the closest Indianapolis player who could maybe make a play. Uh, and, you know, he's just now sort of realizing what's going on. But Howard is already past him. And, you know, he's at a full speed. So he's going to continue to get past him. Uh, the only other way this could work would be if the Indianapolis player defensive back who uh, is currently running towards the middle of the field, passed the Tampa Bay player off to the safety, who is deep, and then he came back and covered Howard. But that's tough. Uh, and also, Howard just got there so quickly, no one was able to notice, and he just gets completely wide open. It's, of course, a good play design and a good well-run play by the entire Tampa Bay offense, but Howard was a big part of that, and you know his speed really was what made that work to some degree. 
there's a reason why people before the draft were potentially saying that he could be a top five draft pick. Uh, and, you know, he fell down to 19 and many thought that that was going to be a steal for Tampa Bay. Uh, and so far, it hasn't really worked out that way, but there definitely have been the flashes. And, you know, if he can just get uh, a little bit better at catching and he can just get rid of the fumbling problem, you potentially have a guy who, again, the measurables are still the measurables. He's still 6'6". He's still 250 pounds. He can still run a 2.51 40-yard dash. That's not... Or did I say 2.51? Uh, 4.51. 2.51 would be very quickly. But I also think for Tampa Bay, listen, I mean, you know, even if O.J. Howard doesn't end up being elite, I think they're all right, at least for this year. I mean, obviously it would suck. Uh, you had high hopes. It hasn't worked out that way just yet. Uh, but at the same time, I mean, you have someone like, uh, a, you know, Cameron Brait, who's a really good receiving tight end, not necessarily the best blocker. But then you also have Gronkowski, where even if his receiving ability isn't there, last we saw of him, he was the best blocking tight end in the league. So, you know, the hope for Tampa Bay is that Howard can kind of be the guy who can do it all. And he can be out there. And then, you know, if it's a blocking play, you put in Gronk. If it's a, a passing play, you put in Brait. And obviously, you mix it up to some degree to, uh, you know, fool opposing teams. But either way, I mean, they're going to have a lot to work with with those three tight ends. And Howard still has value for sure, no matter what. Uh, the question just is, can his good plays outweigh his bad? And really, just can he get rid of those really bad mistakes? Because turnovers really hurt you, especially when it's a tight end committing those turnovers. So, yeah. That's just what I think about Howard. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.